Welcome to Matzelworks. Again, we're talking about Lego train automation and today uh, we go specifically into the topic of sensors. What do you need sensors for? Uh, what we basically do when we're automating Lego trains is uh, we start a train and we stop it. And we need to detect the precise position of the train. We need to know that the train has reached a certain position on the layout by those sensors in order to you know make it slow, make it faster or stop it. So that's a sensor. Um, you probably know that the typical vendors of Lego automation components offer those infrared sensors to do the stuff with their yeah, a little automation like, like flipping a switch or something. That is not a really convincing solution. We've tried that a lot of times, but infrared uh, receivers depend highly on the light around you. When there is sun shining on the sensor, it doesn't work anymore. So it's uh, really a two digit uh, percent error rate, which we're talking about. So that's absolutely not suitable for a decent and professional Lego train automation. We need something else. Uh, we need sensors that are widely available, cheap and 100% reliable. And we found something really fantastic. It's a, a read switch in miniature and uh, they look like this. It's uh, yeah, a miniature uh, magnetic switch and it's actually triggered with a magnetic field. This is a magnet, a very strong one, a neodyme magnet. And when you go over the read sensor with, with a magnet, it will you know, flip. That means the contact between the two wires is then closed. And um, the magnetic field, uh, the direction of the magnetic field is um, relevant. So if you do it this way, or perpendicular to the sensor, it doesn't work. You really need to go over it parallel to the sensor and then it works very well. Uh, the detection rate is 100%. So that's really good. Now let's have a look uh, because this is a non-Lego part. Uh, how do we integrate that into the Lego systems? This is part 4081B. Uh, it's uh, plate modified one by one with light attachment thick ring. Uh, so if you want to order that on Bricklink, you've got the precise description and you take the read switch, put it into the part, take the other one, come from that direction, put it together, Careful with your fingers. And then you've got the read switched and it's integrated into your Lego system. You just take it, put it on the track, and basically that's it. You just need to solder a wire on it. And that would basically already work. Of course, uh, we are not satisfied with that completely. And uh, so, I experimented a lot uh, until I found this way of integrating the sensors nicely into the track. Uh, this is here again the uh, uh, plate modifieds and they are actually attached with a tile 2x2. Two two. And here are some curved slopes um, in, in case there is something hanging down from the vehicle that's then pushed up a little bit. so it won't um, block here at the sensor. Um, yeah, that yellow tile is a special thing. If, if you're from Germany, you know what it means and uh, it's uh, typical for German railroads. Uh, my personal choice. And here is some tiles and an arc and those little one by one round plates. And they actually fix the cable here which goes underneath. So 
you can pull the cable and you won't break the sensor or you will not rip it apart because that is now fixed it's some uh, security for your cable as well. So that's a good way of building the sensor, I believe. Building instructions are available on the website for free as always. And uh, you can just download them on muzzlebricks.com and uh, see what part you need if you want to build that precisely uh, like here. Um, you can use, of course, a plastic track. I'm using 9 volt tracks. They've got one uh, very large advantage. They've got these little cutouts here. And this is perfect for the cable. Then you don't need to modify your plastic track uh, or you don't need to balance it, put it a plate higher uh, to be able to uh, put the cable nicely uh, from inside the track to the outside. So that's... Uh, my choice of building the sensor. Mm, so, so much for sensors, but we also have the magnets. The magnet is um, yeah, relevant uh, and important to trigger the sensor and that will be attached to our vehicles. So how do we integrate that into our Lego system? Very easily, we take part 3700, that's a Technic brick, one by two, it looks like this. And with a little bit of force, you can actually put the magnet inside uh, these bricks. If that doesn't work, if you, if you don't have the right tools for it, just uh, drill it a little bit up um, to five millimeters and then the magnet will fit in. Easy, yeah. So that is how to put the magnet into the Lego brick. If you don't have enough space in your vehicle, you can also use single Technic Lego bricks. That also works, no problem with that. Also a very good solution. So um, it, it, it doesn't really matter how you put the magnets into the vehicle. The only re requirement is that they are as low as possible to trigger the sensor here. Um, what you usually do uh, when you have a standard vehicle like this, you just take the wheel set and place it just here between the wheels. And then you're done. No, that's, uh, then you're done. You don't need to do more. Just be careful that the axis of the magnet is perpendicular to the track. That's important to actually trigger the sensor. If you do it uh, incorrect, then the trigger won't. Uh, then the sensor will not be triggered. But let's not try it. If you go with the wheel set over the sensor here, you see that little light on the controller. It indicates that the sensor is triggered. So that works perfectly. You can do it ten thousand times. Uh, if the error rate is zero. It really works very well. So that's what we need for our Lego train. Automation. Very good. Vehicle with a magnet. Let's have a look at how to attach the sensors to the controllers. So uh, what are we talking about? This is a controller, a Matsu layout controller mini in this uh, case. Building instructions are also available uh, on the website. I'm, I'm just about to compile them. I will shoot a video about that as well. And you can attach up to eight sensors to that MLC Mini. In the standard configuration, you've got here on the side where the status LED is for LEDs. So you can attach two light signals and uh, the ones closer to the USB part here on the other side are uh, for servo, so you, you can attach switch motors and the remaining two, they are for sensors. You have to connect the lowest and the uh, top pin here, the bottom pin and, the, and uh, the topmost pin in order to trigger the sensor. Uh, it's pretty easy. The only thing you need is, where is it? 
you need a cable here from your read switch with a Dupont plug set. So it looks like this and you can attach that very easily to your controller. Make sure that you actually really find the right pins here. If you do something wrong, especially when you create a shortcut between plus and minus here like this, uh, it will actually break the controller uh, because there is no uh, resistor or something here inside. You could actually do that in order to protect your uh, controller, but I didn't do it. You need to do it right. It's easier and safer if you actually use a plug that looks like this. It's a, a triple plug here. You just uh, put cables into the outer ones and then you can't do anything wrong. No? And this, this is definitely safe and this is really hard to break now. So that's a very good idea to use those plugs here for your sensors. There's another little thing here on that cable. It's actually an adapter cable. It's a JST plug here. And this is on this cable because most of my sensors, and I've built a lot of them, have those uh, JST connectors here. They are actually better than the DuPont connectors because they hold together firmly and they will not fall apart accidentally. So that's a very good idea in order to increase your operational security and safety on your layout. Um, so that's uh, the way to do it with the MLC Mini. And for those who have, a, have enough time <laughs> and invested at that time in building an MLC Mega, the more powerful version of the Matsu layout controller here. They have eight sensor pins here and uh, it's actually pretty easy to attach the sensors here. You just need male connectors of course and this I, I built myself uh, I built myself a little adapter cable here so you can actually uh, connect four sensors here with those JST plugs at the same time and this is pretty handy because in many situations sensors are more or less on the same position on your layout and a, um, a train station for example or on uh, on a track somewhere but it's it's uh, very uh, common that there is more than one sensor on the same position. So I've got this adapter cable and I can connect multiple sensors in one go to the controller. Also pretty handy. Uh, if you start building the sensors, my recommendation is start with DuPont cables. That's good enough for a start and doesn't make it too complicated then. So now we learned about sensors, we learned about magnets, how to attach the sensors to controllers. I would say it's now the time to do a little practical test and see how this is working in real life. I've uh, set up a very simple uh, plan in Rockrail. It just consists out of two blocks. There's one block there and here, and it's a commuter train that, that goes from one block to the other and back. So um, per um, block, we've actually got two sensors. That's the normal situation in a rock rail train layout. Uh, this first sensor here is when a train comes from that direction, the enter sensor, that means the, the train enters the block. And this is the in sensor, that means the vehicle or the train is inside the block and can now stop. And the, the, the route ahead of it or behind it can actually be freed. So uh, enough talking, let's just give it a try. Start the auto mode. 
and start the train. So let's see what's happening. Oh, that looks good. And our sensor hit. Vehicle becomes slow. And here we are. After a couple of seconds, it should, yeah, it should start to go the other way. Ah, that looks very good. So uh, I think you can't see it there, but there we have also an enter sensor and uh, in sensor, same uh, thing as here. So, and while having a look at this, what do you think about those lights on the rail bus? It's actually um, uh, bi-directional lights that automatically change when the direction of the vehicle is changing. We've got even three lights in the front. That was really complicated to build. I think I will make another video out of this and explain how to do that. Uh, so, um, I believe that was it about sensors. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you want and want to stay up to date uh, about LEGO train automation, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, there should be a button somewhere down there. Uh, we've got also a Facebook profile and for more detailed information, as always, the website, which includes billing instructions and technical information about everything. So, uh, have a good day. See you soon.